Restaurants say they will find it difficult to reopen under level three of the national lockdown due to additional costs. Many have run out of funds and have turned to government for assistance. Lawyers who represent the Restaurant Association of South Africa say the sector has suffered a great deal over the past three months. Its attorneys have communicated with Tourism Minister Momuluko Kubai Ngubani about the new conditions under which restaurants will be allowed to operate, with emphasis being placed on health and safety protocols to stop the spread of COVID-19. For more, we are joined by Wendy Alberts, who is the CEO of the Restaurant Association of South Africa. Wendy, a very good morning to you. When will... When will uh, restaurants reopen good morning how are you today good thank you but we are eagerly awaiting uh the clarification i mean the gazette was issued last night and it was very really unclear and we made contact with the department this morning who assured us of their urgent attention um and that they are speedily and presently putting those protocols underway and that we're sure that the department will address us before close of business today what are some of those regulations and protocols uh, that you, you have to adhere to? We are eagerly awaiting on those protocols from the department. Uh, we have certainly asked for 70% capacity and we've displayed the responsible way to ensure that we can safely open the industry and ensure the health and safety of all our patrons and staff are of our highest priority. We're asking our viewers this morning uh, whether they will be returning, or whether to restaurants or cinemas or casinos, uh, as they're allowed to now. And uh, the, the views are differing. Some people are happy to go back. They want their, their ready-made foods, but some people are still cautious. Uh, what, what conversations are you having with the public about their concerns with regard to reopening? Um, we've had several um, discussions with the public. We've certainly run some consumer groups and we've done some consumer research. And what we do know is that there's a large portion of consumers that are very ready to return to restaurants and are looking forward to the experiences that they've had within the industry. So we've had positive feedback on um, the consumer research that we've done, and we will continue to um, educate the public on the safety that we have within restaurants for patrons to return and enjoy a meal in a safe environment. Your organization is concerned about running a business in this environment, uh, especially in relation to costs, uh, where you also have to uh, fork out money in relation to uh, keeping with the health protocols. Tell us about these concerns. We, you know, we've, we've turned our businesses and we channel our businesses to alternative um, methods and to different business structures from onset. So immediately when COVID happened, we had to cut our business and the liquor trading times which was a big draw and downfall to the industry. Furthermore, to that, uh, on every level of reopening, we've adjusted the business structure to one being only delivery, which is a small part of our business. Secondly, it's been to takeaways, which is also a small part of our business. And as we've allowed ourselves to open at every level, we've um, empowered the third-party delivery to take 42% of our turnover, which has really left us in a very vulnerable position. So we've been calling to government to reopen the industry at a 70% sit down to allow us to trade with alcohol and to be able to reopen our businesses in a safe way. Um, it is the only way with regards to the financial model. We can't survive on doing 20% of turnover with the huge expenses we've got. And we've also got a large portion of our staff that are still on unemployment. In fact, I wanted to say to you, just the other day, Stats SA released the unemployment figures at about 31%, more than 31%. What portion of this makes up uh, workers in this industry, in, the, in your sector? So what we do know is that uh, we are currently trading at 20% of turnover under the current restrictions. That leaves about 80% of our staff uh, on unpaid layoffs. So you're looking at uh, an industry that employs close on 800,000 people directly. Indirectly, if we had to include... Um, all the suppliers and the producers to restaurants as well as the community services that come into the restaurants, entertainment, etc., as well over a million people. And 80% of those people are currently unemployed. What kind of solutions uh, is your organization offering to government in terms of finding ways of going, ahead, going forward? We certainly have um, put together a plan to rebuild the industry. You know, we need to look at ways that we are going to smartly engage with the small business, the local tourism, we need to engage in getting domestic tourism up and running. We need to revive the businesses. There's a number of iconic restaurants that have closed around the South African tourism belt and a number of other restaurants and iconic spaces, restaurants that are over 20, 30 years old that have been part of the landscape of South Africa. So we need to continue to engage with uh, government to find resources and uh, grants to be able to allow these businesses to open. 
we certainly have been uh, favorably working with the insurance companies have now started to acknowledge the responsibility they have in paying out those insurance policies. We're working hand in hand with landlords. We are having conversations with the banks in terms of looking at ways to bring lending. I mean, they've, they've closed the doors on lending with the industry. They saw that we are high risk. So we're having those communications and looking at alternative lending solutions to bring cash flow into business to assist them in surviving. We're certainly talking to the supply chain as well as very many food vendors. And we're also looking at uh, the um, engagement with the Department of Labor in terms of the wage structure that we've got. Are there any uh, restaurant businesses that have had to close down? We've got pages and pages, hundreds and hundreds of restaurants that are listed um, with the association that we are formulating in a list to give to the department to show the severity of how hard the industry has been hit and how many fatalities we've had and how many closures are happening on a daily basis. Yeah, thank you so much for talking to us. You're saying you're waiting for those protocols. Any indication as to when uh, finalization will be made? We believe that the uh, industry will be addressed this uh, evening by close of business, so we eagerly await the department to talk to industry. I hope to talk to you then. Thank you so much. Wendy Albert's there with the Restaurant Association of South Africa. That conversation is linked to the question we're asking you today. As COVID-19 infections surge in the country, will you be visiting restaurants, cinemas and casinos, uh, which can now operate? We ask you to send us your comments at the agenda underscore SABC. Let's take a look at some of the tweets that have come through. Ashton Ryan says, it's so risky. I don't understand how it's all allowed. The only open restaurant is the Corona Buffet. However, one might dispute that it's the same as Mr. D Mr. Delivery or Uber Eats. Casinos and cinemas shouldn't even be contemplated. Definitely COVID-19 hotspots. Um, as VLR saying, we'll do as soon as a cure is found, not before. This is just a measure to minimize chances of infection through things I can live without. The idea of battling to get a hospital bed while sick, being taken to a field hospital, if I'm lucky, is a huge deterrent for me. Ghost Android saying, that's not happening in a great hurry. The COVID-19 surge is devastating, and if you could avoid places of public interest, do so. You don't know the status of those around you. Home is the safe haven. Stuart McConnor saying, Morning, Desiree. Hi, Stuart. I don't think I'll visit any of them anytime soon. I'd rather prefer to get a, a takeaway from the restaurant. And Numbulelo Mudise saying, no, staying at home is much safer for me and my family. I don't think it will be 100% safe, so we'll rather cook and watch movies at home. I still go out only for essentials. The notorious Mabilani saying, no, I don't visit restaurants, cinemas, etc. It's better to be safer than sorry. COVID-19 isn't over because more and more people are still getting infected and dying every day. Let us take care of ourselves, Mzansi. Let us not be counted to those who died because of COVID-19.